Everyone knows the story of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and other similar stories of incestuous, cannibalistic families kidnapping travellers so that they can kill and eat them. But Scotland actually had its own version. One that was so extreme that even the king got involved. Sonny Bean. You'll never guess what, I actually have a sponsor. This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. <laughs> VPNs provide you with online anonymity by masking your IP address so even the websites you visit won't be able to identify you. It's like having camouflage on, but you aren't in a bush, you're in an internet bush. VPNs also encrypt your data, preventing cheeky breakies from acquiring your information over the network. They also prevent your ISP, ad companies and hackers from seeing your browsing data, to prevent them from being traumatised. VPNs also give you the ability to access content that might be unavailable in your country because on who does that? Why even do that? It's just annoying. ExpressVPN has several locations in 94 countries and these are some fast as hell big speedy boy servers with flashing lights and all the trimmings. That makes ExpressVPN consistently faster than other VPN providers. Plans start from less than $7 with a 30 day money back guarantee. I personally use ExpressVPN because if Article 13 passes, I still want to be able to access most of the internet after everything gets blocked. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get 3 months free by clicking the link in the description, expressvpn.com slash countdankula. I asked if I could get slash big daddy bilge 420 but they told me I wasn't allowed so it's expressvpn.com slash countdankula, that's expressvpn.com slash countdankula. Like, legit, please, I need this. Alexander Sonny Bean was born in 16th century Scotland in East Lothian. His father was a ditch digger and a hedge trimmer and he was trying to get his son Sonny involved in the family business. Sonny didn't really like good honest work and so at a young age he ran away from home. While Sonny was on his travels he became a highwayman. He would murder travellers that he met on the road so that he could steal all of their stuff. And apparently the story goes that one day Sonny was starving and after he killed a traveller, he dragged the body off into the woods, cooked it, and ate it. And apparently he got a taste for it. He would sometimes spend time at the inns of local villages, usually in the winter when it was too cold for him to survive out in the wild. And while he was wintering in one of these villages, he met Agnes Douglas, who was every bit as messed up as he was, and they ended up falling in love. Oh. Agnes was constantly accused of being a witch and earned herself the name Black Agnes and one day the villagers chased her out of town so her and Sonny left the village together to go and live in the wild. They did their usual of killing travellers and cannibalising the bodies and Agnes apparently used the bones and body parts for black magic rituals. Eventually they came across a cave located at Benane's Head in Galloway and they decided to make it their home. The cave was remote, secluded, well hidden, and it couldn't even be accessed during high tide, which made it the perfect hiding place. In this cave, the couple had 14 kids, 8 sons and 6 daughters, who then went on to have 32 grandchildren, all of whom were products of incest. So the Sony clan eventually amassed a total of 48 people, who all took part in the family trade, of going out at night and hunting down travellers so that they could drag them back to the cave and eat them. During this time, one of the daughters of Sonny and Agnes decided that she didn't want to be part of this anymore, and so she fled the cave to go live in the town of Girvan, which is not far to the north of where the cave was. When she was there, she changed her name to Elspeth McCrudden to start a new life. One of the things that she did while she was there is she planted something called a fairy tree, this is an old pagan belief where if you plant a certain type of tree in your garden it would protect you from curses, evil spirits and all that other stuff but we can get into that later. While the Sony clan continued what they were doing, a lot of the local coastal towns were reporting lots of body parts washing up on the shore and also the towns were very aware that a lot of travellers were going missing. Since the body parts were badly mauled and found near water, 
all the townsfolk thought it was one of Scotland's many mythical creatures that were doing it. It's an old Celtic belief that bodies of water are portals to the other world, which is why a lot of Scottish mythical creatures are said to live in or near bodies of water, like rivers, lakes, and also the sea. So a lot of people thought it was one of these creatures, and nobody made the connection that it could have actually been people who were doing it. We were... We were a really superstitious lot back then. So the Sony clan continued what they were doing for 25 years. And some estimates believe that they could have killed thousands of people. They were able to fly under the radar for so long because they never went into any of the local towns because they never had any need to. They got all the food and clothing that they needed from the people that they killed. And they also never ever went out during the daytime. They only ever went out at night. Which is why nobody even knew they even existed. But then there was a fair happening in Galloway, which attracted travellers from all over Scotland. Good news for the clan, bad news for them. But one night would set in motion a series of events that would lead to the clan's demise because they made the mistake of underestimating their target. At night, a man was riding on his horse with his wife on the back, travelling home from the fair, when all of a sudden all of the Sawney clan came charging out of the woods, screaming like banshees in an attempted ambush. What the clan didn't know was the man was an extremely experienced soldier and cavalryman who had seen a lot of combat. So the guy started fighting back against the clan with his sword, pistols, as well as running them down with his horse. However, during the fighting, the man's wife got pulled from the back of his horse and he didn't realise. And he turned around to see the women of the Sony clan literally ripping his wife limb from limb and disemboweling her with their bare hands. The man flew into a complete rage and started fighting back even harder. Luckily, there was another 20 to 30 men also coming back from the fair who were travelling on the same path. They heard the fighting happening up ahead and so they charged ahead to help. When the Sony clan seen all these men on horseback running towards them, they retreated and vanished into the woods and despite a lot of the Sony clan being quite seriously injured, all of them managed to escape. The men tended to the soldiers' wounds and helped him gather his wife's body up for burial, but they were also shocked by what they had seen that they and the soldier immediately rode for Glasgow so that they could report this to the chief magistrate. Due to the large number of witnesses, this incident was then reported directly to King James of Scotland himself, and he was so horrified by the details that he and a unit of 400 soldiers as well as several bloodhounds departed for Galloway so that they could hunt down the Sony clan. The bloodhounds led the soldiers to the cave and they surrounded it and due to many of the Sawney men being quite badly injured from their fight with a the soldier, they weren't in any position to fight so the entire Sawney clan surrendered and all of them were arrested. When the soldiers searched the cave they found clothes, rings, jewellery, swords and other valuables that had been taken from travellers. They also found pickling barrels and drying racks filled to the brim with human body parts. There was apparently even full children's corpses hanging on the drying racks. The entire clan were roped and chained and were being escorted back to civilization. but the way it was done back then is when prisoners were being taken to the toll booth where trials and executions happen, they usually get paraded through the local towns and villages just so that they can prove to everyone that they captured the people that they were looking for. While the prisoners were being paraded through Girvan, Elspeth was actually in the crowd that had gathered to see what was going on. And Agnes and Sonny apparently recognised her in the crowd and called out to her, referring to her as daughter. And the whole town seen this, so Elspeth ran back to her home. Right after the king and his men left the town with their prisoners, all of the village folk grabbed their pitchforks and marched towards Elspeth's house. The townsfolk already had a mistrust for her because the fairy tree that she had planted, they all started referring to as the hairy tree because it had grown into this monstrously horrible abomination which was apparently a sign that she was a witch. Now apparently, Elspeth had children and people believe that when she managed to get back to her house she put the children on the back of the horse and told them to flee the town because her children were never found and no one has any idea where they went. Elspeth, however, was dragged from her home and the townsfolk executed her by hanging her from her own fairy tree. And if you know anything about the old Celtic ways, that is very bad juju. So the king and his men brought the Sony clan to the tollbooth to be processed. 
it was then decided that the clan were savages, beings of such low, horrific contempt that technically they were animals, so there was no need for a trial. Only humans get put on trial, and immediately after that they were marched on to Leith to be executed. The men of the clan had their hands, feet and genitals cut off. These were then thrown into a fire, and the men were then tied to the scaffold to bleed to death, a spectacle that the women and children of the Sony clan were forced to watch by the guards. It was during this time that Sonny apparently shouted his last words, It isn't over. It will never be over. The women and children of the clan were then all burned alive at the stake. The story of the Sonny clan's quite a good one, isn't it? I even went on to inspire a few things in modern cinema, most notably Wes Craven's The Hills Have Eyes. That was actually based on the story of the Sonny clan. There's just one wee problem. All of this might be a lot of shite. There are parts of it that we do know are true, like for example, the cave. The cave is actually real and it's exactly what it's said to be in the stories and it matches all the descriptions. And you can actually go and visit it, which hundreds of people do every year. The hairy tree of Govan is referenced in some historical records and apparently it was as huge as it's said to be. Apparently it was so big it was even visible from the shores of Elsa Craig, a small island off the coast of Govan. But no one can find a tree matching that description in Govan. Now, maybe it is still there, it's just not as huge or as ugly as it's said to be because it got exaggerated. Maybe the townsfolk destroyed it because they felt like it was a bad omen, or maybe it didn't even exist at all. Nobody has any idea. There were reports of more disappearances than usual happening in that area of Scotland, but nothing anywhere near the thousands as described in the story. Also, and this is the big one, there is no record of such a spectacular mass execution taking place in any of Scotland's major cities and you would think with a spectacle like that, at least one person would have written it down. The explanation that makes most sense to me is, there was a family who did live in that cave, but they were just your standard everyday highwaymen, who would try and dispose of the bodies by cutting them up and throwing them into the sea. It makes sense to do that because if you leave bodies behind after an ambush it just gives the king soldiers a better idea of what area the attacks happen in so then you're just making it easier for them to find you. So it makes sense that they would dispose of the bodies. But it's also very plausible that during times of hardship the family would resort to cannibalising the bodies. So that's, that's the explanation that makes most sense to me. So I do feel like it is true, it's just been greatly exaggerated. Lots of old tales and legends often get exaggerated and embellished as time goes on to make them more entertaining, that's just the way it goes. But it really got pushed with this one. Like, really pushed. And it turns out that there was some driving force behind it that made this story a lot worse than it actually was. And it turns out there was a very good reason for that. A political reason. The earliest and I believe original source of the extreme version of the Sony clan story can be found in an old publication called the Newgate Calendar which was published in the 1700s not long after these events. The Newgate Calendar was a monthly publication that was put out by the keeper of Newgate Prison in London detailing crimes and executions from all over the country and it was very popular. The problem was is that it itself embellished and exaggerated a lot of things and was very very biased especially to enemies of England and England's social order. It spoke a lot against, you know, the vices like drinking and gambling, Catholics, the French, and anti-Anglo monarchists. So you could kind of say it was an old school version of fake news. There was also something big happening in Scotland around about this time. The Jacobite rebellions. And wouldn't it be really, really handy if the people of Britain saw the mostly rural living Jacobites as incestuous, cannibalistic savages. And so people have theorised that that is why this story was pushed. It was to give a really, really bad public image of the Jacobites. It was propaganda. And it was pushed mainly by everyone's favourite pro-Celtic Anglo-Union propagandist and author of Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe. And what did Scotland do with this exaggerated piece of propaganda that was designed to make us all look like incestuous cannibals? We turned it into tourism. It's
Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.